going to log into a site that's actually our developer site. It looks just the same, but it's sort of our not ready for prime time site where we, we're adding new features. So I'm going to log out and uh, log into Magpie Dev. Uh, And as I said, this looks just the same as the regular Magpie site, but it's actually our developer site. Um, and let me look, go ahead and log in. And what we have on our developer site, which is not yet available on our public site, but which will be in September, um, here we can see the same kind of data dashboard that I, I demonstrated in the live Magpie site. But we also have a messaging link here at the top. And if I click on the messaging link, it brings us to a messaging dashboard where we're testing the new messaging system. The basic idea behind the messaging system is that you'll have a list of messages, as you can see at the top of the screen, and a list of contacts, which you can see on the lower part, lower left part of the screen. And you'll, you'll choose a message or messages and a contact or contacts, and then you'll set a timing. So, for example, if I, if I choose this message that says, flu season is coming, don't forget to get vaccinated, as soon as I click it, I can see on the right-hand side of the screen, it knows that I've selected a single message, and it's showing me the single message timing. So I can, for example, say I want to send it to a variety of contacts now, or I can choose a later time to send it. I can also specify do I want it to go out once, or every day, or every week, or every month, and how many times I want to repeat it. So I could say I want it to go every week, and I want, I want that to happen three times, for example. And then when you press send, it just goes out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, um, if folks don't mind, I'm going to add uh, uh, a couple of the people who had volunteered before. If you don't want me to do this, please let us know. Um, and you won't be receiving numerous messages, just the one. Uh, I'm going to click the Add button on the bottom part of this screen to add a new contact. I'm afraid I don't know the names of the people with these phone numbers, so I'm just going to make up some names. We'll call them uh, John Smith. And I'll put the mobile number of 919-740824-164 and save that. You can also categorize people that you enter into groups. You might have a, a group for different companies, etc. You can also pick a time zone for that person. Uh, obviously, it's important if you send a message out, you want the message to go in a particular time zone. So let's go ahead and save that person. And just, I think, for the sake of time, I'll probably limit it to just, to just that person rather than adding these, all these different contacts. But I can see if I've added this person who I've given the name John Smith, and again, apologies, I know that's not your real name. Um, I can select the flu message and select the contact and say, I want that message to go out now. Keep in mind, I could, I could for example, say, I want this to go out to all my contacts in Kenya right now, or I, I want this message to go to all the people working on a particular project, and I want it to go next Monday and then once a week. Lots of different flexibility. And uh, in this case, I'm just going to say send the message now and once. When I click send, it tells me that the single selected message is going to be sent to the single selected contact as soon as I press OK. So I'll click OK, and it tells me there's a message in the top right that says to click the schedule link for more information. I see at the top next to messaging, there's a schedule link. And if I go to messages waiting to be sent, I can see that there's the one we just programmed to go to uh, the 919 number. The system goes through this kind of outbox every minute. And so when you send a message now, it might have to wait for up to 60 seconds before the system sweeps through and, uh, and picks it up. We can also see there's a queue for um, the messages that have already been sent, and when they were sent, the sender's time zone, the sender's mobile number, etc. If I go back to waiting to be sent, I see it's still there, and again, within a minute, we'll see that it leaves this, uh, this list and goes out. We're going to be adding, again, lots and lots of flexibility around how do you schedule these messages, um, the ability to send multiple messages, and I think people can, with a little imagination, think about they could use this to educate populations. You might send out messages to pregnant women. You could send out messages to remind people of clinic appointments. You could send out messages to help coordinate your field staff. And let's go back to the 
and I see that the message has left the queue waiting to be sent and is now present in the, the sent messages, so the 919 person should now have received that message. Now if I go back to the, and, and if they're still on the call, they can confirm that. If I go back to the messaging link, I want to also show you that when we add a new message, there's the ability to add SMS messages. As you can see, that's a text message sent as text. We know that if you type text here, um, this is a test message. We know that um, if we send it as a text message, this text will appear in their phone. But when we release this, you'll also be able to click text to speech, which will dial the phone of the person um, that you, you want to send this to instead of sending it as a text message, and the computer will read out this text as an audio message. We're also adding the ability to record audio messages, and it will be similar. The computer will dial the phone number that you specify, or the phone numbers, and in each case, will play the audio file that you have recorded here on the screen using these, these buttons that you see. And again, one can imagine that this is the type of thing that could be extremely powerful in reaching illiterate populations with recorded audio, in, in coordinating field staff, in educating populations. I think there are going to be endless uses. All this stuff will be available, um, <coughs> as I said, in September. Now, I should mention that the SMS part will be available to free users, but the text-to-speech and audio, the two different audio components, will only be available to paid users. SMS for everyone, the audio messages and text-to-speech for the paid users, paid subscribers. Um, and so um, I'm happy to take questions about the messaging or to take any questions that remain about the data collection portion. Great, thanks, Joe. Do we have any follow-up questions on the messaging? There's a question, uh, what is the pricing schedule of the messaging system? That's a great question. We're actually trying to figure this out ourselves. You know, for the, for the Magpie data collection system, one of the reasons that we can offer the free version um, is because the cost to us of operating the free version is very, very low. Part of the reason for that is that when people upload data to the Magpie system from their phones, um, if basically they pay for that, con that connection fee. Now, it's not very expensive, so if you, for example, filled out 100 forms on your phone and you uploaded them via the internet, via your mobile internet, the cost would be just a few US cents. But you can imagine that if we were to pay for that at Datadyne, that would wind up for 20,000 users or 21,000 users, it would be a lot of money. Since the user bears the connectivity cost, it actually allows us to offer that free version. But with SMS, um, it basically, we get charged to receive SMS messages, unfortunately, um, not just to send them. So if people were sending, um, if people were sending SMS message from the Magpie messaging system, and also when people receive messages into the Magpie system for data collection, in both those cases, Datadyne actually has to pay one or two or three cents. And so we're trying to figure out how can we have something similar with data collection that gives even free users some ability to use the system, but gives more abilities or more features to the paid users who are paying for the whole system. And I think it's going to work out something like this. I think free users will be given an allocation of SMS messages each month, maybe 20 or 30 or 50 SMS messages, completely free, that they'll be able to use those credits to send out messages. And I mean, you know, 50 SMS messages is not a huge amount, but it's enough to send out, you know, a message to 50 people once a month or a message to 25 people twice a month. Um, I think people will find useful things to do with it. We'll also have the ability, even for the free users, if they want to buy more SMS credits, they'll be able to do so. Just like with the data upload credits, the paid users will get a certain, a, a much larger allocation of, of sending out message credits, and they'll also be able to purchase more. So uh, although the economics of it for us are actually quite different for data collection versus sending SMS messages or sending audio messages, um, we're still trying to figure out some way in which we'll be able to, and I'm sure we will be able to figure out some way in which we'll give the free users something that truly is useful, though limited, um, even with their free accounts. Great. Thank you very much, Joel. I think those are all the questions we have.
today uh, and all the time that we have. We really appreciate your time and uh, explaining the Magpie to us. What a great tool. Uh, <coughs> yes, thank you very much. Oh, it's, a, it's a great pleasure and uh, I think people saw on the screen the, uh, the link for uh, further information or to get in touch with us and I'll, I'll be happy to take any questions by email, etc. Great. Okay, fantastic. Thank you all.